The way I was treated, I was taken to a prison with, a, with quite a low Muslim population. What I'm known for is criticising Islam, so there's been many at planned att attempts to murder me and kill me in this country. I was taken to a, a, a prison with a low Muslim population of 7%, where things were relatively normal. I was separated from other prisoners, but the prison officers made sure they opened my doors multiple times during the day, and they took me out to play pool and snooker with themselves. I was then taken from that prison and transferred to another prison, and I was transferred to the prison with the largest Muslim population in the UK for a CCAT prison. I was then put on, put on solitary confinement where I spent two months um, not seeing or speaking to anybody and they used the reason that I was in danger. Now they would have had risk assessments before I went there. I was purposely taken to be put in danger so that then that reason could be used to then put me on solitary confinement. And if you think about what has happened in this case, it took a number of hours to put, take me before a court, prosecute me, unlawfully imprison me, and then it took two months with the prisons moving me to prevent my legal access, shortening my legal visits, and it took months before I got the opportunity to go before a judge. Once the judge heard what had happened in the trial, we found so many illegal and wrongdoings within this kangaroo court that then it took another two weeks before I was freed. And to, and to be honest, this whole encounter, if you talk about, I, I haven't eaten, I've, lo I've lost nearly, nearly 40 pounds in prison. I had a one tin of tuna and a piece of fruit a day. I, I was supposed to be in Her Majesty's prison service, not Guantanamo Bay. <laughs>
<clears throat> this tactic where everybody gatekeeps, including on the supposed right wing. Oh, don't go on Alex Jones. He's an extremist. You'll get attacked for going on. Well, it's the same thing they do to Trump all day. You know, don't support Trump. He says all Mexicans are murderers and rapists. Really, show me the video. Show me the audio. It doesn't exist. So that's the game these frauds are playing. And they're the enemy. They're the problem. They're the issue. And we need to just keep hammering that. But now, as I predicted a year ago, because I know how they operate, they're saying there's going to be blood on your hands, Trump. There's going to be blood on your hands, Jones. You're criticizing the media. And when there's a terror attack against the CNN, or there's an attack that happens, you know, it's going to be on your hands. No, it's you, the left, calling for hashtag hunt Republicans and beating up people and shooting them and, uh, you know, uh, saying the guy that shot Congressman Scalise wasn't a bad guy on CNN, Wolf Blitzer's show. You're the ones doing that. You're the ones inciting the country. You're the ones pushing all that, not us. But I'll tell you, CNN just likes to promote the false flags uh, or the staged events or the provocateur events where they let some crazy Prozac head who's saying he's going to kill everybody. You know, they turn him loose in some program because his last name's Cruz. He wasn't even Hispanic. So he's allowed to talk about he's going to kill people for three, four years and be involved in all these crimes. And then you let him get wound up and go kill people. And then you try to block my videos exposing that the police stood down, saying I said nobody died at Parkland, which I didn't say. You're frauds. You're liars. So so the, the only problem at CNN and ABC News and all the rest of it is, and MSNBC is, they're not going to want to let some crazy actually attack them. That's why there hadn't been a false flag there yet, because every time there is some type of nutball that wants to do it, they find out about it and stop it, and they should. So the last thing we ever want is violence against the lying scumbag fake media, you know, the corporate assassins of truth. But what we do want to do is expose the fact that they're a fraud and look at every card they could play because they're really building up towards we're the victims, we're the victims, we're the victims, we're the victims. So two plus two equals four. They're getting everybody lined up and getting everybody ready for something big. And everybody can see it because they're getting their butts politically kicked at high noon. Doesn't mean we're going to have a real shootout with them. It means they're getting their butts politically destroyed. And we're nonviolently winning, and that's just the good news, and that's what is so exciting. All right, uh, we're going to go to break here. David Knight is hosting. Uh, as everybody knows, InfoWars is under unprecedented attack because we're over the target. And then we come back from break, um, we'll have the uh, video of Mr. Robbins on Tucker Carlson breaking all this down. I want to remind folks, it was only Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson, myself, uh, Matt Drudge, who would defend Robinson when he was put in jail wrongfully for his speech. And now he's a bigger hero than ever. It's really blown up with their face. He's got to be very, very careful now. He's next level. We've all got to be careful. So do I. So do you. Uh, but just remember that everybody else on Fox is saying, take me off the air and then lying about what I've said. Uh, and then going after Tucker and others that have defended my speech. But Ted Cruz gets it. Tucker Carlson gets it. Matt Drudge gets it. If we don't hang together, we'll hang separate. Infowars.com, Newswars.com, next year's news today. Hear it for yourself. Find out what we're actually saying for yourself. Don't just go off the enemy's propaganda, uh, the enemy's garbage. Go off the reality of what we actually say and find out why they fear us so much. Keep spreading the links. Get the free app, Infowars.com, forward slash app. But whatever you do, realize this is an information war, and you spreading the word is so critical. And the reason they're afraid of Infowars is because they're afraid of you. Tell us what it was like for you behind bars. For me, behind bars, it, the way I was treated, I was taken to a prison with, a, with quite a low Muslim population. What I'm known for is criticizing Islam, so there's been many at planned att attempts to murder me and kill me in this country. I was taken to a, a, a prison with a low Muslim population of 7%, where things were relatively normal. I was separated from other prisoners, but the prison officers made sure they opened my doors multiple times during the day, and they took me out to play pool and snooker with themselves. I was then taken from that prison and transferred to another prison. And I was transferred to the prison with the largest Muslim population in the UK for a CCAT prison. I was then put on, put on solitary confinement where I spent two months um, not seeing or speaking to anybody. And they used the reason that I was in danger. Now, they would have had risk assessments before I went there. I was purposely taken to be put in danger so that then that reason could be used to then put me on solitary confinement. And if you think about what has happened in this case, it took a number of hours 
to put, take me before a court, prosecute me, unlawfully imprison me, and then it took two months with the prisons moving me to prevent my legal access, shortening my legal visits, and it took months before I got the opportunity to go before a judge. Once the judge heard what had happened in the trial, we found so many illegal and wrongdoings within this kangaroo court that then it took another two weeks before I was freed. And to, and to be honest, this whole encounter, if you talk about, I, I haven't eaten, I've, lo I've lost nearly, nearly 40 pounds in prison. I had a one tin of tuna and a piece of fruit a day. I, I was supposed to be in Her Majesty's prison service, not Guantanamo Bay. I couldn't open my windows because I was having excrement and spit put through them. I had, I believe this whole process and Tucker, this isn't the first. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but well, who is, is putting excrement through your window and spit through your window? So my, my, my prison cell that I was put in was on the lower level, the ground level, which it didn't have to be. So it was on the ground level. So every prisoner would walk past my cell window, every one as they walk out. So when my windows were open, there were, every prisoner's walking past. But the mosque for the prison was directly opposite my cell. So every time, and we've had huge heat waves, I was literally drenched day to day, and I had excrement and spit thrown through, through the doors, thrown through my windows. So in the end, I had completely blocked up windows, I had to block up all of my, my cell windows. And all of this, so when, when I say this, uh, to a lot of people around the world, this, what, this current case, and the world has watched it, has shocked them. For me, this has been nothing new. You know, someone very profoundly once said, many years ago, that if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of, li of liberalism. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. You know, President Trump talks about how we need to be trailblazers, how we need to be outsiders, how we need to expose the current stagnant system that's been suppressing us, wanting to make us poor so he can consolidate control and buy us up for pennies on the dollar. That really is the globalist system. And he's absolutely right. So it is an honor. Uh, to be persecuted by the globalist and to be lied about and to be demonized. But it's an honor to draw them out so we can show who they are so that you take action and you take the country back politically, culturally, spiritually, financially. Another hero is Julian Assange, who's been in solitary confinement in a closet-sized room. They converted a closet uh, with a bed and enough room for a laptop. They took that away uh, over a year ago. No communication with the outside. It's all been one hell of a time for him, and he was very bipartisan in that he exposed Republicans, he exposed Democrats. He very judiciously released information that exposed criminal activity of the NSA, criminal activity of the CIA, illegal spying on Congress, illegal spying on Trump, illegal spying on me, but they had my home number, my old cell, my new cell, and my office line, and they had Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago private apartment number that I had. Total proof of Obama spying on Trump and yours truly a decade ago. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the real deal. And America's had freedom so long, people don't recognize real tyranny when it hits them right between the eyes. But everyone needs to go to Infowars.com. The article is right up there at the top of the page, red link. Petition to Trump, pardon Julian Assange. And we go over the fact that he engaged in regular journalistic activity and did a wonderful job being advised by top journalism professors around the world. And that he was very, very fair about what he did and that you need to send the message that he's a hero. Now, I know they claim he's a Russian agent with no evidence and all the rest of that garbage, even though they've released stuff on Russia and Israel as well, and China. But it doesn't matter. It's the right thing to do. And you wouldn't have gotten elected without drudge. You wouldn't have gotten elected without what, what you've done, obviously. You can't say it's any one person, but without any of us together, it wouldn't have happened. So we need the president to pardon Julian Assange. And you said in a speech, I don't care who got her illegal server. It's illegal. It's about what she did that's wrong. Don't change the subject. Go back to that instinct, sir. But you told Assange, release it. You said release more stuff. And he's in the crosshairs. And he needs to be pardoned if he's brought back to the United States. We need your support more than ever. They're literally trying to shut us down every day by this point. So please support us by getting the products at InfoWarsStore.com where we have super silver wound gel bullet points. This is new technology that's an advanced patent and technology that's forever changed the colloidal nano silver market. There's been extensive research on silver sole technology, which includes 20 plus safety reports, test series, as well as the first ever Double-blind, FDA-cleared human ingestion toxicity study done on any silver product. Formula is 24 parts per million 
the 32 parts per million version is FDA cleared as a prescription medical device. It's one of the only OTC products with direct claims against MRSA and VRE, two of the most deadly forms of bacteria that can cause infection. So it's great first and second degree burns, including sunburn. It's basically an armor for your wounds. This is a protective barrier that guards the wounds and helps keep them from getting infected. I'm definitely gonna get some of this. Barrier of protection can last up to three days on the skin, which is great because when it happened to me, when I get these big scrapes down the back of my feet, plasters just ain't gonna cover it. You don't even have, you know, bandages, plas plasters just aren't gonna do it. So this would have been great for that. It's perfect for athletes of all ages in all areas of sport. It is super silver wound gel bullet points available as an exciting new product right now at InfoWarsStore.com.